Hi there, this is the Admin Junior. In this tutorial, we're going to be doing something a little bit more exciting. We're actually going to do something with our car. Before we start, this model is not my model. Credits to the modeler are in the description. Um, I believe I know where this came from, but um, I'm not going to say anything. The level of detail is quite good. Um, I mean, if I ramp up the subsurf to say 4, you can see here that there is a nice detail on it. Um, but for now, I'm just going to keep it at level 1 for subsurf. Just so that things are nice and smooth in the game. Okay. So, to start off with, I'm going to talk about how we're actually going to make the car move. Now, I think I've probably talked before about the difference between local and global axes. Well, this is where it really comes into play. Because when we modify the car's location from our logic editor, from our code, whatever, we have to be very careful about the way the car is actually originally positioned. Now, if we see here, if I select the car to start off with, if we have a look at the axis indicator on the bottom uh, left-hand side here, we can see that Y is actually pointing in the direction the car is going. Like that. This is in the global axis. Now, normally, I like my my forward-facing direction to be on the x-axis. And sure enough, if we go into if we go down here to the um, the three D widget manipulator widget um, settings down here, and if we change the orientation to local, we can see that suddenly everything swapped round. And if we have a look at the widget. X is actually the forward facing direction and Y has become sideways. So do be careful of that and make sure you're aware of which one the car is actually facing forwards. The next thing worthy of noting is whoops, let's get the view sorted. Next thing worthy of noting is the or the um, origin of the object. Now, if I had a default cube right about here. And we have a look at it. We can see that by default this is little orange dot right in the very center of it. This is its origin. Now, it's around this point that the cube will be scaled, that it'll be rotated, etc. Obviously translated, but the whole thing moves, so the origin doesn't really have anything to do with that. Now, this origin is important because of its effect on rotation. We can move everything but the origin by going into edit mode and just moving the vertices, edges, raw vertices, edges, faces. If we see the orange dot hasn't changed position at all, it's still right there by the 3D cursor. So we've moved, we've effectively moved the cube but left its origin behind. And now we can see if I try rotating a cube, we can see what effect that has. It actually rotates around the origin, and because the origin is away from the center, it creates some sort of offset. Now we're not really going to want we. Oh, sorry, we're actually going to make use of this later on when we talk about turning our car, because of the way a car turns and because of its ax axles and things like that. But to start off with. In order for me to reset the origin on an object, I need to press the T key, and this will bring up the tool shelf on the left. And underneath Transform, if I click Origin and set Origin to Geometry, it'll change. It'll move the origin to the very center of the object again. And you can see, you can probably guess what the other options are for. That's the other way around, and that one moves the origin to the 3D cursor. <clears throat> so there we go. So local space first of all, x pointing forwards, and we need to sort out this origin. So to start off with, I'm going to um, transform the origin to geometry, so it's just going to go to the very center <clears throat> here. Now this car has two locked wheels at the rear and the two forward ones are the ones that are actually doing the turning. 
So in order to replicate this, we need to realize the fact that this is going to affect the turning point, so the point around which the car rotates when it turns. And of course, this means that the origin is actually going to be halfway between these two wheels. In other words, at the center of the axis. Now we can use that transform origin technique to set the origin of the main car here so it will turn properly. And we do that by first of all selecting the two back wheels. And I'm going to snap. You can also get it down from object snap. I'm going to do cursor to selected. Now this is going to put the 3D cursor exactly in the center of our two wheels. With that done, I can select the car, making sure not to left click anywhere, because that will move the cursor somewhere else. I'm going to select the car, and I'm going to do transform the origin to the 3D cursor. So now if we look from the top, if I rotate this around the Z axis, it rotates nicely as if it were as if as as it would if it was in real life so now we've set up our model really and we next step is to actually look at it from the object nodes so i'm just going to create a new panel at the bottom here and set its view type to logic editor i'm going to collapse that we don't need it so with the main car selected, the first thing we need to talk about is the update method. Now, if you'll remember, if you watched my introduction to game uh, tutorial, which was a little uh, PowerPoint presentation, then you'll have heard me talk about the update method and how really Blender sort of does its own up. The stuff that you see in here in the editor is actually the update method, really, in Blender. Well, we're going to be doing it with Python scripting. And in order to create our own sort of physics type uh, motion, we need to have some sort of update method within Python so that we can control that. So, in order to do that, I'm going to use the always sensor. And if you don't know what I'm doing here, then I would advise you go have a look at my um, node reference or introduction to logic nodes, things like that, logic editor, that tutorial that I did, um, or you know, if you or if you need a bit of a refresh, uh, please do go have a look, save a bit of time, puzzling over what I'm doing here. But essentially, what we're going to do is create this sort of update method, which is run every frame. And it's going to help us control the way the car moves. So, proper naming if possible and the execution method on this is going to be module not script and this is going to be trans motion because this is going to be the translation of the car so it moving forwards and backwards rather than the rotation for that I'm going to create a different a uh, separate motion actuator so that's that connected. One more thing is to add an AND controller so that, that motion is actually applied to the car every frame. Now you'll, this might confuse you why we're applying it every frame but you'll see quite quickly why we're doing it this way. So that's the update method done. Now we need to add a keyboard sensor and this of course is going to be for moving forward. And for this we're going to use a Python script as well and make that execution method module. And this is going to affect the translation motion. So you can see everything's been hooked up to this translation motion actuator. Because what will happen is when we use the Python um, controller it, the, the controller is actually going to affect the values on the motion actuator but it's not actually going to apply it. For that we need this AND controller 
which will actually run it. So that's forward done, and make sure you bind it to up arrow. Um, I think we'll come back to reverse. We're just I'm just going to do forward for now. So, again, I'm not going to swap to another layout. I'm just going to move this down a bit and add another panel in here. And this is going to be a text editor. So click new and create a new text. And I'm going to call it game. So, game of pie. So before we can actually use this properly, we need to save it somewhere externally. So go ahead and save it somewhere in your desktop, in your documents, right next to the f the blend file, wherever doesn't matter. But just make sure that it's saved as a with a .py extension. All right. So the first thing we need to do with our Python script is to import the. Uh, Blender Python libraries. I think I've covered importing. If I haven't, <laughs> which is a possibility, you don't really. What this does is takes. Um, what this does is adds classes and objects and variables and methods and things from external files. So I'm just pulling all of those into here so I can use them. And we're going to import two things. Um, we're going to import Blender Python libraries and math utils, I believe. So, what I'm going to do here is organize it by as I would normally in a more professional game, and organize it in classes, and then create instances below that. Again, if you're not familiar with classes and functions and things, have a look at my previous tutorial on them. Or alternatively, if you can't be bothered, just copy it down. So, this is just going to be a class for this car. So I'm going to name it after it. And we're going to create a couple of public variables. So, max, well, no, start off with velocity. And this is going to hold the current velocity of the car. Maximum velocity. Uh, 0.5, I think. I think it's a pretty good idea. Uh, if experience serves. Um, and what else should I need? Well, I'll leave that there for now. We'll see if we need anything else. I'm going to create a method, and this is going to be the update method here. Now, as with any method within inside a class, it takes a parameter of self. Um, but with Blender, because we're um, using it from within a controller, the special thing we can do with this is we can take another parameter. So we can take two parameters, one for the class, but another parameter which is going to be the controller itself. And this is usually designated A. So we have two parameters, self and A. Self is the class, A is the controller. Right. Now, what we want to do with this update method is create some sort of reactionary force. Because imagine that we're driving the car forward, so it's got a positive velocity on the x-axis okay now if we take our finger off the keyboard what's going to happen it's just going to keep going in on the x-axis it's going to keep going forward now in a real life that won't happen you take your foot off the accelerator and as I'm learning you the car is going to slow down and will eventually come to a standstill so in this case, we want to create some sort of reactionary force, which is actually going to slow the car down as long as the car is moving in a forward direction. 